All right, guys, what we're working on our golf cart today, we're coming into like the camping season again, and I'm trying to get this thing ready and up and running, and we had an issue with our batteries not wanting to charge. So we got our battery charger right here, and usually all you have to do is plug it right into the golf cart, and you'll see this amp meter kind of just jump up, and then when it's fully charged, all the way over to the right side, and that means that you're all good to go. Well, one thing that's been going on is it hasn't even been turning on. And with our golf cart, I think it needs like 36 volts to uh, recognize that it's hooked up to the onboard computer. And then it will turn this on. And for some reason, it is not kicking on. So I've gone ahead and pulled all of the batteries out. This one takes six batteries because the 48 volt electric golf cart. And I went ahead and labeled them all so that I know if uh, I've already tested them, ran through them or whatnot. Um, and so I've gotten one through six labeled. And a couple of the things that uh, I'm looking for is some kind of voltage on these batteries. Um, so on this one, on five, you can see that I got 4.29 volts. This is supposed to be an eight volt battery. So it's a little bit, I mean a lot of bits on the slow or on the low side of the voltage. And uh, but then two of the batteries that are kind of concerning me are number one and six, which is the first and last one in line of all these batteries. And you can see that this one is showing negative 1.12 which I mean is showing reversed polarity anyway, so that's kind of odd. But this one has very, very low voltage. So with the golf cart batteries and stuff like that, you're supposed to be recharging them, I don't know, a couple times a month and I got behind on them and then I forgot. We've had really, really crappy weather here lately and just not weather that I really want to go outside for. You know, even today it's a gloomier day outside I'm supposed to be only 60 and it cloudy all day. So there's always a chance of rain as well. So it's just one of those things, you know, we got all the animals. I don't mind going out and feeding them and playing with them and stuff. But I don't know why I keep on forgetting to charge this golf cart. And now it's going to probably cost us maybe one or two batteries. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if we can recover them though. And uh, see if we can break some of the sulfur loose that's uh, collected on these battery cells because if you don't charge them and stuff and even over time on regular just even over use you get a sulfur buildup i believe on all your cells on the cell plates and that's what causes the issues that's what causes them to go wrong and most of the time from research your batteries end up going bad because of poor charging practices, not because they're getting old. So this is probably my fault. So what I've got is uh, the battery charger hooked up. It is on a 12 volt charging right now. And what I'm trying to do is break up the sulfur buildup. So we've got a higher voltage going in here and I'm just checking the temperature of the battery by feel, making sure that it's not overheating or anything like that. And uh, this is the number two battery. And as you can see, the number one battery, I put an X next to it. As soon as I hooked it up, it said that it was in the wrong uh, charging position with the positive and negatives. So I knew I wasn't incorrect on that. So I'm gonna have to look at that one a little bit deeper, maybe even buy a new battery for that one. But these batteries, are supposed to be 8 volts and they were manufactured 617 so they're about on the last leg anyway but uh, I want to try to see if we can save them and get at least another year out of these things so when I first took up these batteries um, it'll it popped up and it's a diesel on there d-e-s-u-l and it's a diesel full desulfate on there that's what it means and it's just trying to break some of that stuff loose and now we're in a reconditioning mode and you can see that it says reconditioning and then it may switch over to the maintenance for the charging and it'll charge it up. And hopefully this battery will be a good one. And these batteries are like $140 a piece, six volts 
or the uh, lower voltage it seems like they're more expensive for some reason which is odd um, I haven't bought a uh, battery for like our car in a long time so I don't know exactly the price of those but I bought one for the Model A last year and these are and even looking at these prices they're all well over $125 so hoping to be able to recover all these all right guys so here we've uh we're about i don't know four or five hours into this battery reconditioning kind of deal that we've got going on so battery one and six are right here those two are on the end of the lines um i think six is where the positive lead on the camp or on the uh, golf cart go and the negative goes off of one and goes to the actual like golf cart and uh one and six are not good number two is good number three is doing its thing right now and what i'm looking for is whenever i clamp my multimeter up right now i'm getting 7.33 volts and this is on an 8 volt battery so when we are charging we are getting 8.33 volts and we still have two batteries sitting over here and I will show you guys what I'm kind of looking for to see if it's going to be a decent battery or not. See this one's 4.6 ish volts. So these two are going to be usable batteries. Oh, where's that? There it is. 4.37. So these two are going to be okay batteries. They will come back to life and then this one as well i think i showed you number one battery look at that 0 0.09 volts so this one's not these two right here are no good number one and number six i don't understand how it works with them being in line of each other how uh those two end ones got bad i guess that's just the way it works but i think we're going to take those two batteries and get those uh, replaced while well, these other ones are getting all reconditioned um, so what I'm doing is I've got them on a 12 volt 10 amp cycle right now and it's reconditioning just like uh, the number two battery did and I'll leave it on there for about two hours or so and then uh, so I'll sh well you guys saw that it was on the uh, 8.3 volts so yeah, I'm just kind of uh, putting around the house today and uh, working on this golf cart, trying to get these batteries going so that we can actually get it running again. And then once I get like 36 volts, um, we should be able to get that automatic charger plugged up and it'll actually charge all the batteries the correct way instead of putting it on this. And then uh, I'll have to come up with some kind of routine schedule like every weekend plugging it in. Um, I don't drive them around the house at all really uh, but you know maybe that's something I'm gonna have to start doing just to discharge the batteries and then hook it up and let them charge let's go ahead and get those uh, batteries from the store and uh, hopefully we'll get these other ones done and we'll get the golf cart running all right guys we're on to the uh, next day we've been uh, letting this kind of sit out here I've got four batteries right here you can see in the picture all of these have been getting reconditioned for uh, about at least 12 hours. Each one of them has been doing it for about four hours or so a piece. They've all gotten right at almost eight volts in their uh, battery. And then, like I said, I had two that weren't, uh, weren't charging at all whatsoever. So I've got two new batteries, went and picked these up this morning. So funny thing about that is that I went and we're gonna go drop them off, picked up these two batteries, and when you guys switch out batteries, if you have the old one, or if you don't have one, you get charged a core charge fee, which is anywhere between, I don't know, I think this one was gonna be like $30 per battery if I didn't have them, and uh, but I did have them, but they were in the car, so these eight volt batteries are extremely heavy. They're like, oh, right about 60 pounds a piece. And whenever I went to go buy the two new ones, I asked them if they had a cart and they had just like a little push cart or whatever. And I asked if I could just buy them and then go out, get the old ones and bring them back in. That way they didn't have to make like four different trips. 
He said, yeah, not a problem. Went and took the new ones out to the car and loaded up the old ones onto the cart, started putting the new ones in. And when I got the second new battery off the cart, the cart just bloop, just tipped right over. I mean, and there was no stopping it. The, the cart top was probably about 30 inches up off the ground and there was no stopping it. It was right next to the curb. So you're probably dropping a total of 36 inches or so. Both batteries hit the ground and completely busted apart. And so I took the new ones, or I took the old ones back in. I said, hey guys, listen, they dropped over and both of them broke. Sorry. He goes, ah, don't worry about it. We'll just throw some stuff onto the uh, ground and clean it up. So, yeah, that sucked having that cart tip over. But whatever, we got two new batteries. And I think we're about ready to start installing these and uh, seeing if it works. All right, so I've got the multimeter hooked up onto the new battery now. And you can see that I've got 8.2. 29 volts and let's see I'm hooked up so we're gonna go ahead and install these new ones on this one will be number one and number six which will be on the positive and negative terminals for the actual golf cart and then the other ones will be linked together all right guys so I took some time uh, probably about 20 or so minutes got all the batteries put in and I've tightened down all of the nuts on all of the terminals so they're all together and as you can see i changed out the one that was marked number six and number one so those are both brand new batteries and i have the charger out here and i'm going to go ahead and plug it in and we'll see if it takes over and starts charging up the golf cart on its own oh that's awesome so that's exactly what we want to see we want to see it getting charged up so that means that it's doing uh you know it's thing it's charging and then once all the batteries get full this should shut off automatically and uh We'll see how, uh, how everything does. All right, guys, so that was a success on this little quick job. Uh, I was worried that we were gonna have to buy all new batteries and there's six batteries. They were $130 a piece. That kind of gets pricey, um, but it is one of those things that you got to factor in whenever you have some of these play toys. So luckily we were able to diagnose that just two of the batteries were bad instead of all six of them. And now we can let that charger do its thing. I'll go ahead and start getting a better schedule for charging this golf cart, using it, wearing down the batteries, charging them up, things like that. That way they actually get used instead of just sitting around here. Hope you guys were able to find it useful and able to help char find out if something's wrong with your golf cart batteries. If you guys are new, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.